This is international master Eric Kislik, and today I'll be showing you how to play white in the French defense, and I'll also be illustrating the best defense for black against what I'm suggesting, so it's basically useful for both sides, whether you play white or black. And the basic idea in my repertoire against the win R is to obtain the bishop pair, play dynamically, and try to complete your development, have the bishop pair, and simply be slightly better. And fortunately, I, I was able to do that against three different international masters in one tournament. And in the Steinitz French, the basic idea that I'm playing with white is just to consolidate my space advantage in the center. And I've had multiple games against grandmasters playing the Steinitz with actually relatively good results because the thing that I like about it is, is that it has very clear logic. And if the logic is very clear, then as long as we kind of understand what we're trying to do, we can all play the position pretty well. You don't have to be a strong grandmaster to play good moves in these positions. And that's what I really like about it. So even when I was a 2100 player and I was playing these Steins positions, I actually had quite good results when I managed to stabilize and maintain my center. So let's take a look at this win R line that I'm suggesting. I'm suggesting playing the move a3. The main move is e5. There's, there are very long and complicated lines there. I'm suggesting playing a3, takes, takes, d takes e4, queen g4, attacking e4 and g7. So we win our pawn back. We take on g7, and we go here. Okay, so now um, I face the move c5. I win 92, and here I play the move rook b1 to attack the b7 pawn. The move bishop d7 is aimed at playing either knight c6 or bishop c6. And here I played an interesting move, d takes c5, with the idea of coming in with knight d4 and knight takes c6. So I'll show you how that played out. Knight d4, knight takes, and here I brought my queen back. Takes, c4, h5, and here there's an idea of just simply developing with bishop e2. The problem is our g2 pawn is loose, so I play the move g3 first. And then my plan is just to go bishop e2. And the main point is, I have the bishop pair, and his king is not really safe. So, if I can just put my king on a safe square, I should be slightly better with white. So that line I quite like. The main line is to play rook to g6, queen to e3. And I'll show you a line that I faced in one of my games against an international master. Knight c6 was played, knight e2, knight e7, knight g3. Okay. So they maneuver their knight around because they want to attack my queen on e3. So I had a game where knight f5 was played, hitting my e3 queen. So queen f4 is what I played, and then knight to d5. And here I think an improvement over queen takes e4 is actually to throw in the move queen e5. I want to provoke f6. So here you'll see an interesting point. So queen takes e4, knight takes c3, I go queen to f3. Okay, so I let him take my d4 pawn because I want this pin with bishop to b2. Knight takes g3, h takes g3, queen e5 check. So I go queen e3, takes, takes, knight a4. Okay, so let's pause for a moment. So you might be looking at this position and thinking, well, aren't we down a pawn? We have five isolated pawns. Haven't we done something wrong? No, we haven't. I'll show you why. So here, we get to play bishop to b5 check, bishop d7 bishop to d3, that's an important move. One of the points is we provoke the bishop to come to d7 because of the tactical vulnerability after takes, takes, rook h8 check, and the a8 rook drops. So by moving the bishop away from c8, we've exposed the a8 rook in that line. And if he goes here, we can go takes, takes, and queenside castle. This is also good for white. Um, black just doesn't quite have enough for the exchange. So. That line works out pretty well. Um, the best line for black actually looks pretty obscure, and this is the reason why I'm suggesting this variation for white. It's one of those lines where you discover it when you analyze with the computer, but then after the game you go, well, probably nobody's going to play that. And in my own games, I obtained an advantage every time against 2450 players, so I can't really complain about the positions that I've achieved. So bishop d7. He's planning to play the rather subtle positional idea of bishop a4. So I go c4. I'm planning to extend my uh, c1 bishop's diagonal. Bishop a4, bishop b2. I'm putting my unopposed bishop on its best diagonal. Knight f5, challenging my queen. 
So I take, take, and go queen f4 to attack the pawn on f5. So he takes the pawn, all right, I'll develop my rook, and go queen takes f5. And now the best move is probably to play queen to d6, that's stronger than queen d7, when I'll be happy to enter an endgame. But here, after d5, bishop to d7, black is actually in a pretty good position to maintain equality. If I go into an endgame here, black can castle queenside and is doing perfectly fine, I would say. So this is the best line that I've been able to come up with against the a3 line. But fortunately, black is required to play rather obscure and difficult moves, I would say. Uh, most players I would not expect to find this exact sequence of moves. So I think a3 is is definitely a practical winner. It's just in practice a very sensible and reasonable idea. And uh, a lot of the main lines of the win are, are very, very complicated and difficult nowadays. So playing a sideline like a3 is very, very valuable in a practical sense. Let's go on to the Steinitz. So knight c3, knight f6. Here I'm gaining space with e5. Another line is to play bishop g5, but I find this to be more logically principled. And you'll see what I mean in a moment. So f4, c5, knight f3, knight c6, bishop e3. So we have a ton of different ideas for development here. The bishop on f1, it might come to e2, it might go to g2, my queen might go to, go to d2, I might go knight e2 in some cases and try to put my knight on d4, I might go d take c5, we have many different plans. So let's go through the moves here. So if bishop e7, this was played against me by one grandmaster, I'll show you what I played here. I took on c5 and I went queen d2. He castled and I castled. So one of the ideas here is that it's hard for him to attack and it'll be easier for me to actually get an attack going. And in some cases I can occupy the d4 square with a piece. So he went queen a5 and I think this was, I think I was the first player to play this idea. I never took credit for this novelty because I didn't think it was of, of that much importance, but a3 is actually a somewhat important move. And after the move a6, well, part of my idea with a3 is that I was trying to discourage him from taking with the knight on c5. Because after knight takes c5, in a lot of cases we have ideas where we move the king and we play b4, and we try to fork the queen on a5 and the knight on c5. So queen takes c5 is the best move, but then we just get to go bishop d3, and now if we look at black's king, it's it's rather airy. So for instance, knight e d4 takes takes rook b8, we go c3. Here we can go queen c2 and we can go h4. And actually, let me look at the database here. I think there were some games here. Yeah, there were actually eight games here. h5 scored 100% and b4 scored 90%. So this is pretty compelling stuff. You might be surprised by this move, but it's actually a very nice move. Just really freezing black on the queen side. And one of the points is, okay, if black goes a5 and tries to open things up, we can go king b2 and just challenge the a-file. And black has no attack, his pieces are just shut out of play. So we have pure positional domination and close to a winning position. So this is really a almost a pure refutation of this variation here. So a lot of people don't know this, but this is a very valuable line. So I definitely recommend playing this. So after c takes d4, I'll show you another line that basically went out of business. People used to play it a couple of years ago, nobody plays it anymore. So after queen d2, queen takes b2, rook b1, queen a3, bishop b5, okay, so I'm attacking c6, takes, takes, a7, a6. Okay, so he pretty much had to play a6 to try to drive our bishop away. It was really that much of a thorn in black's position. So I take and go rook b3, and then I take. All right, so rook c8 and queen a3. I go rook fb1, bishop c5, knight e2. All right, so I totally consolidate here. I'm trying to recapture on d4 with my knight. Notice that it's also a bit difficult for him to castle because of his bishop on d7 being hanging. So here it's actually rather interesting. Look at the, the database here. I see eight games with h6. And so after h6, I play the move f5 breaking things open, and the point is he can't castle because of the bishop on d7. So after e takes f5, this is quite interesting. After h3, white scored 100% in four games. Rook one to b3 was also good, but I like the just the 
calmness and the subtlety of h3 because I can go rook 1 to b3 next move and black is just totally stuck just basically unable to find any decent moves and he's not even able to complete his development so this is um, pretty close to I mean this is this is objectively a, a full refutation of this line this position when I checked it with the computer briefly was plus two so definitely check in the description of this video and you'll see my analysis here so you can just download the analysis and then you can play the play the line so after bishop c5 um, which is the deviation instead of queen b6 I, I just like to go queen d2 castle and g3 and here uh, in many cases I just want to go bishop g2 and one of the hot lines here was to play rook b8 trying to prepare to play b5 in some cases but I like preemptively stopping it with a3 and also planning b4 in some cases for instance takes takes b6 here I like the simple b4 and after takes takes I like how white has prevented black from doing anything active here. So if he goes f6, I can go e takes f6, queen takes f6, and queenside castle. And I'll be happy to enter that endgame, actually. So white should be slightly better in this specific variation. And I'll go back to the main line. Please look at the lines in the description if, I've, if you feel like I've gone a little bit too quickly or pause the video at any time. I think these are very useful lines to play and as I said you can just download them easily from from the link so bishop e3 a6 and here the move I like the most is knight to e2 which has been scoring the best for white as of late one of the problems is that some of the main lines have been worked out rather well for black but after queen b6 so let's take a look at this queen b6 I go queen c1 to defend my my b2 pawn here so he goes bishop e7 and I go c3 and he goes f6 and you might wonder well why did he have to play f6 here the problem is that he needs to strike back at the center we have a very big center here so he really does need to challenge it almost right away so my idea now was how about I give myself the d4 square takes 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 knight ed4 so I was thinking about this position and just thinking about whether I have an advantage with white and the main point was that black not only has a problem with his passive bishop but he also has a problem with the activity of our pieces and in some cases the e6 pawn so for instance let's say he castles I go bishop d3 bishop d7 castle he goes knight g4 knight g4 has the idea of preparing the move e5 so let's say I just go queen d2 and he goes e5 so he's carried out his only real pawn break. I go b4, I chase his queen away. All right, so let's say I just take, 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 and I go queen to g5. This is a nice trick because I'm hitting the knight and I also have queen takes d5 check if the knight moves. He goes queen d6, I go queen to g3. So here's a good example of a variation where I've left black with an isolated d pawn and a passive bishop on d7 and I have a slight advantage. So this is, a good example of pretty solid play for black but where he still does not end up fully equal so this can definitely serve as a reliable repertoire for white I hope the strategic ideas here are making sense because basically we're forcing black to strike back at our center in this Steinitz very very quickly and in all of these cases black is just not getting what he wants so I also looked at knight takes d4 knight takes d4 castle bishop e2 bishop d7 and castle and there's some ideas for white I mean one idea for white can be to go queen to e3 and you know putting the bishop on one of these squares and going rook to e1 um, basically limiting his knight keeping all of his pieces at bay centralizing the a1 rook after that and black is slightly worse in all of these lines so I found these to be very satisfying and reliable lines with white um, we're not really risking anything in any of these variations shown here. So I really hope that this can be a valuable and useful repertoire for you. Thanks and consider subscribing.